Hi everyone, welcome to week three of Let's Fix This Garden. So this week I took on a few projects that have been lingering around. It's more of a quick update this week because the weather was really rainy, April showers, you know, but I am determined to come on here every Monday and share what I've been doing in the garden with you guys. Um, your feedback has been awesome. I appreciate you guys so much. So without further wait, I will walk you around and show you some of the things that I've taken care of. So here I am at the back gate and I think you can see right away one of the big changes that I made is that the tutor obelisk, whatever you prefer to call it, is no longer here. I decided to plant a tree. Let's go in and take a closer look and I'll explain. So I've had this Royal Raindrops crab apple for about two years now. And I planted it in a couple spots and I changed my mind a couple times. Um, it lived most of its two years, unfortunately, in its nursery can. So I didn't want that and I wanted to give it its best life. <laughs> a lot of deliberating on where I wanted this to be. And much of what I'm doing this series for fixing my garden is really correcting things that I have messed up along my garden journey and hopefully making more permanent concrete solutions and decisions. So this is helping to keep me in check. You guys are keeping me in check. <laughs> let me let me just back up a little bit so you can get a better view. So the goal here was to provide more shade, a canopy, something really kind of welcoming you in. I can just picture the branches falling over and just, you know, kind of walking under those branches when you walk into the back gate. And I just think it's gonna look wonderful. This particular tree gets to be 15 to 20 feet tall and beautiful magenta pinkish flowers in the spring. So it will be flowering soon. Um, but I just think it's gonna look really wonderful here. Now, when I planted it, I did make sure to give plenty of space between the fence and the tree. I did plant it in such a way that most of the branches will be coming out this way to the side or to the front towards me. There is one branch that is heading off towards the neighbor, but I definitely made sure to not angle it towards her door. And if there is any kind of encroaching or anything like that whatsoever, I will make sure to keep on top of it, keep it pruned and not to get in her space. So mainly I want all that, all the branching to kind of just fill in and cascade over in this area. And then eventually I will figure out whatever <laughs> mishmash of plants that I have in here and have something cohesive. I'm thinking maybe even a bunch of blue hydrangea, just hydrangea would look really pretty trimmed out with the boxwood. So I'm still thinking on that. Um, one thing my mother has told me, the worst decision is no decision. And I could not agree with that more. So I can't just sit on something forever and wait uh, for, it to, for it to be the right thing or the right time. This feels right. This is what I'm doing. And I think I'm gonna end up really enjoying the crab apple in this space. Yes, I need to clean my windows, but here's a view of that tree. And I can just picture from our hallway. Won't that be so pretty? So in planting the crab apple here, I did move that tutor to the back here. And I think that that looks really wonderful too. I'll plant a clematis on there. I'll plant maybe some thumbergia, possibly some sweet peas. I don't know, I don't know yet, but we'll see. I actually think I have uh, a different trellis. I'm gonna put my sweet peas on this year. Now, <laughs> With us changing the garage into a more shed look, we have the door. We are going to make that a Dutch door, which I'm truly excited about. I really, really want there to be a central path so you can walk right up to that door in the middle and you don't have anything blocking the way. I had, you know, knocked around the idea of moving the raised beds over by the greenhouse. But ultimately in my mind, I see this gravel area as another room, as a separate space. I like the idea of having the raised beds in front of our potting shed. So once that's refaced and it looks like more like a potting shed, I think this whole design is just gonna look far better and feel much better as well. 
So last night I went on to Gardener Supply website because I've seen that they have some gorgeous raised beds. So I selected some, uh, four of them, and I'll be reconfiguring this whole area that will be further on this side. So further away and up closer that way. So scooched over, scooched over, and then two three by three. So two square ones that are going to go right in front of that. It'll open up this whole path and it'll give me plenty of space to plant into the raised beds, but it'll just have a better flow overall and um, just a better look and feel altogether. Now these beds, I certainly will not throw them away. I will see if my mom and dad want them first. They're always the first offer recipient. <laughs> I'll check with um, the city because we do have uh, like a city community garden um, where people purchase like little plots where they plant their veggies and things like that, which is really, really nice. I'll check with my kids' school because they do have raised beds there. These will not go to waste. You can rest assured. These will be repurposed and loved and planted. Um, ah, I almost, I almost forgot. Um, in planting the crab apple here, I had moved one of the espaliers down long story short one of I had four and one of them got fire blight last year horribly and died so I dug that up and I had then staggered the espaliers along the fence panels um, well with the crab apple here it's just not going to work having an espalier tree and it won't look right aesthetically either so I have the three right now planted all in a row they are getting buds on them, which is truly, truly exciting. This one here is a Macintosh, and you can see there. Hopefully, that's their final destination. Hopefully, they won't succumb to any diseases. This one's looking a little, a little iffy. These two have buds. This one's looking, I don't know. So I'm keeping an eye on that. I've got my ladder out <laughs> because I was just changing some bulbs in my cafe lights. I actually have a new fountain. I didn't mention it in last week's video, but sadly, um, user error, my error, I pulled the cover that I keep on my fountain off too early. I was anxious and I started it up way too early and my fountain cracked because we got another snow and freeze. Now, I don't know when the crack occurred um but i know that it was cracked and mark and i did everything we could to try and repair it i used special aquatic cement i used a special kind of like rubber cement for um you know aquatic use it looked horrible it looked patched it was cracked all around the bottom of the basin in half it was just so bad and even with the patching it still leaked so thankfully, there was a sale on GardenFountains.com. They had 15% off, which was a huge savings. Also free shipping, and I was able to get the same fountain with the bird that I love. Oh, it broke my heart when that was leaking. Oh, you don't know. I cried. I, li I literally cried for sure. You have to protect your investments, you guys. It's, it's expensive, these things, and we want them to last. So keep your fountains covered. That is my very best advice that I can give to you. They sell specific fountain covers, which I have. And um, yeah, don't get too anxious. Wait for all the chance of frost to pass. Make sure your fountains are dried and emptied when you do cover them. Um, learn from my mistakes. Now, other things, concrete containers, absolutely there's a risk that they could crack. The terracotta pots, I leave these out, there's a risk, but it's not the same risk as a fountain and a expensive piece and a focal point in your garden. So that's that. Um, my Wakefield pots that you know I collect, I would never leave them outside. I can show you the fountain now because it was just delivered 10 minutes ago. So I figured I would tell you about it and I would show you the new fountain which is exactly the same as the old fountain and show you what it looks like before it's in place. So I'm gonna pop over there real quick and show you. So here it is, it comes on a pallet, delivered in a giant crate, super duper awesome, safely packed. That's the top, there's the pump right here. So I'm waiting for Mark to get home. I got it out of here myself and then I thought, no, I'm not gonna risk 
be trying to carry it myself. It's heavy. So I'm waiting for Mark to get home and then we will set it up. We'll be back in business, up and running and um, cover your fountains. Protect your investment. I had this the prior fountain for probably 10 years and this year it just, um, yeah, just gave into the weather and um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still sad about it. I'm still beating myself up about it because if I hadn't have pulled that cover off too soon, I know that this would not have happened. So you live and you learn. So I've got the new veggie beds coming. I will take out the soil that's in these, the garlic, anything I can and move it over if I can gingerly and carefully. Re really right now, all I have is the garlic. So I've been waiting knowing that I'm doing something different here and just didn't know what it was. So now that I have a plan, I can begin to think about what crops I'm planting and, and all that good stuff. So I really do like the look of the two tour there. So I did have, you guys might remember, the single um, birdhouse on the post there. You can see the post leaning on the side there. Um, I took that down because it just felt too much with having this one here. This one I've had for many, many years, many years. And um, having another one, it just felt like they were competing with each other. Now I did want to talk to you a little bit about these types of nesting boxes they're considered. Sadly, they usually always have giant holes for the birds. I started to notice that my goldfinches, my chickadees, things that I used to see in the garden all the time were fewer and more far between. And the reason for that is house sparrows, non-native house sparrows love to take up residency in these nesting boxes. Now at the time when I put this up, I did not, I was not even aware that that was an issue. Um, so I did a little bit of research in what I can do. Now they're aggressive. They are aggressive, they are territorial. They will try and do whatever they can to get rid of the native birds. Um, so Google that because it's pretty grim and they're not very friendly. Um, of course, my efforts won't get rid of them entirely, but hopefully it will minimize their nesting in my immediate vicinity. I'll show you what I got. I got these, they look like just large washers. They are birdhouse hole reducers and these come in different sizes. I got these particular ones on Etsy. Just type in, you know, a birdhouse hole reducer. This is one and one eighth of an inch because apparently this will be too small for the house sparrows to fit in. The jury's out on that. This is, you know, this is new for me, so I don't know. Um, my gut kind of tells me they might still get in. I don't know. So this is an experiment. So my plan is to take down the birdhouse. The roof comes off. And there's separate compartments inside, those lift out. So I'm just with a completely open birdhouse then where I can get in there with a screwdriver and screw in those hole reducers, hopefully, hopefully discouraging those house sparrows from further nesting in there and furthering the problem. You know, they're gonna find a place. They're gonna find a place, be it in your gutter, <laughs> They make a way. It's a beautiful day. You can see the clouds. I'm going to take you inside real quick because I wanted to show you something inside the house that I quote unquote fixed. And I'm also somewhere in this video going to pop in at my parents. I already filmed a little bit there just to show you what their uh, bulbs look like that I planted in the fall in the fall video that I made there. So I just wanted you to see because it's looking so pretty right now. Okay, I'm inside. <laughs> I was too excited not to show you guys this. So we've been playing a bit of musical chairs inside of our house. Um, I took over Thanksgiving. My mother used to host Thanksgiving every year. And this year was the first year that I hosted Thanksgiving. And it was about 10 people and I definitely did not have the space at my old table. So I scouted and found a new table and chair set on Facebook Marketplace. The chairs were not good. <laughs> they looked okay, but they were just not good. The spindles were falling out. They were really big. It just did not fit my style. Every time I came in here, I was like, oh, I can't stand these chairs. 
So for months, I have been stalking Facebook Marketplace for ladder back chairs with rush sheets. So it's got these woven, woven seats. You guys, I got 10 chairs for $175. I couldn't believe it. I honestly couldn't believe it. They were about an hour away and it was so worth it. The dining room, I think, looks so warm and so cozy now. I absolutely love the chairs. I think that they are a perfect fit for my style. They fit in and just they just look good. They look like they should be here. Um, my dad, when I showed him, he said, they look like you. So that right there, yeah, that definitely made me feel good. I do feel like they look like me. <laughs> And while we're here, little daffodil arrangement. That's in a Wakefield handmade pitcher. Peter doesn't just do the beautiful flower pots, you guys. He's got beautiful pitchers too. And I have quite a few of those that I've been collecting. So put some little daffodils in there. Where's Baxter? Where's Baxter at? What you doing, buddy? I see you. Hi. How's it going, buddy? He's got his little, little bone there. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's all. I'm going now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I am at my mom and dad's house right now and you might remember I planted a bunch of bulbs in the fall out here and I just wanted to do an update and show you guys. They have a beautiful weeping cherry here that is in bloom right now. It is so gorgeous. But you can see all the daffodils that I planted. I came here in fall and planted a bunch of daffodils and some muscari. I wanted to plant things that would be really low maintenance for my parents and spread and just come back every year. So I just tucked in all kinds of daffodils into their border. And then I did plant up some baskets here too with tulips. And you can see that those are coming up here looking so pretty. I got some hyacinths coming up in their little planter there. But I just wanted to give you an update. I just tried to tuck in little clusters of the daffodils all along here. And my mom and dad are really loving it. And it looks so spring. It looks so pretty. They've got some nice azaleas here in the front. And that's a beautiful blue hydrangea. So just a quick little update to show you guys some of their bulbs.